consolidation. And the assumption really here is that uh, you guys had some time to watch my videos. I normally give videos right uh, way ahead before I come for any discussion. Parents plus subsidiaries, yes. Yes, parents plus subsidiaries, yes. As a gentleman, here we are. When we talk of group uh, accounting, we are basically talking uh, about this particular serious subject in the perspective of uh, IFRS 10, IFRS 3, and IFRS 10. IFRS 3 and IFRS 10. So it is IFRS 3, IFRS 3, and IFRS what year? 10. IFRS 3 tells us, talks about business combinations. IFRS 3 talks about business combinations. This is IFRS 3, business combination. Business combination, this is IFRS 3. And then of course, if you remember the major concept, nowadays as a gentleman, your examiner is so serious about you getting the theoretical background of this subject. If you look at, for example, financial reporting last semester, if you look at advanced financial reporting of last semester, there were so many critical theories that wanted students here really to have an understanding of the standards. It's no longer about number crunching alone, no. And that is what makes students, very many students, despite being bright, failing in these papers. So when you talk of business combinations, we can only consolidate results if the businesses that are coming together, if the companies that are coming together are genuinely in business. So if we have a company A and a company B coming together, and then it happens that uh, company B is a dormant company. If it's a dormant company, it means that it is not in business. So perhaps they have machinery. Perhaps in this case, they have assets. Perhaps this could be a company like Mumia's Sugar which is not producing anything. So if A acquires B, or if they come together, and then B happens not to be in business at the moment, then there is no way you will consolidate the financial statements of the two companies as per IFRS 3, which tells us that uh, we can only do group accounting whenever the companies that are merging or whenever companies that are involved in the acquisition are both of them in business. They're doing business. And then ladies and gentlemen, IFRS 10 takes this thing a notch higher, takes this thing a notch higher and tells us that if you are to consolidate, you can only consolidate financial performance of a group of companies. And a group of companies, as somebody hinted to us, a group of companies basically is a parent plus what year, plus subsidiaries. Plus subsidiaries, there could be many subsidiaries like that. A parent plus subsidiaries. Ladies and gentlemen, remember a parent just like my son. My son is a little bit younger. My son is a little bit younger. If I tell this young boy, like for example, today, you will go to school at six in the morning. He can't say no, dad, right? I'm in control of things, right? I guess I could pick up, a, for example, teenager, high school, mimi najua natanga shida kidoko. Yata kwambia, daddy, mimi si pangui. Mimi nafanya vitu kivya. In time you have to watch he in time. so another who are a bit independent. Ladies and gentlemen, a parent basically is that particular company that is controlling another company. Another company. If I'm controlling my son, then I become a parent. And of course, a good parent, even if my son was to go to the university, I still should be able to exercise some form of control. So when you talk of a parent subsidiary relationship, we are looking at what IFRS 10 calls the control aspect. Remember initially before IFRS 10, we used to say that so long as a parent has made an investment, which is more than 50% in a company, that A, if A goes ahead and buys, say for example, 60% of B, then we are saying that for sure A has got what year? Control over B. Because 60% means what? 6% of common stock, 60% of ordinary shares, means that these guys here will be having what year? A lot of uh, directors. During the AGM, they'll be able to point, pinpoint, you and you who want to sit in this particular company's board. That was the old standard. The new standard goes away, quite far away. 
from the number threshold. It looks at what we call a substance over form, substantially. What is happening on the ground, ladies and gentlemen, we could be having like, for example, 20% of company B. 20% of company B. But if, for example, the majority shareholder who has 80%, if this majority shareholder who has 80% says, hey, you know what, gentlemen, I'm too busy. I'll not be able to have time to run this company. You guys are the guys who happen to be knowing this business. I'm relinquishing my control to you, right? If, for example, this company B is supposed to be having five directors, I'll allow you guys, despite you having a smaller percentage, I will allow you to appoint more directors, for example, four out of the five directors at the company house. But even if I have 80% of the shareholding, because I don't have the expertise, I don't have the time, I'm allowing you to do what you to appoint four. So it means that even if, ladies and gentlemen, I have a smaller percentage, I'm the one who is in charge of the day-to-day -day operations of this company. I'm the one who is telling, in this case, here, this company, that this is a strategic plan. I would want you to walk this way. And of course, we approve that strategic plan as a board. A board, in this case, that has been sponsored basically by who? By a who has, yes, a smaller percentage. But because he's the one who is calling shots over here, then automatically we will say that uh, A is in control of B. If you look at your past papers, especially for the students who are doing CPA section six, you will see where they are telling you that uh, A has got 40% shares in B. And they are quite clear in their mind. The CASNEB examiners nowadays are very good. They're highly trained. So they'll tell you that A has got 40% in B. All right. And then somebody will go and start making that assumption that because A has got 40% in B, that 40% is below 50%. That 40% will be an associate. We'll be looking at associates later, will be an associate. And then of course, the moment you handle it as an associate, and yet the examiner went ahead up there to tell you that even though they have got 40%, company A is the one that basically runs the show is the one that is in control of the operations of the company. So they told us, ladies and gentlemen, that A has got 40% of B, but despite the smaller percentage, they have that mandate from the other shareholders to control company B. So it's all about who is in control. If you are in control, then automatically you are the parent. There's another language I've always seen, ladies and gentlemen, this examiner's use. They'll tell you that A has got 40% of B. A has got 40% of B. And then they'll tell you that this other remaining 60% is widely distributed. It is widely distributed perhaps among us what here, 100 shareholders. At times they even tell you equally. So if this 60% remaining is distributed among us, even just 10 shareholders, if it is distributed among us 10 shareholders, it means that each one of them will be having a paltry 6%. So then who will become the king? The one who had 40% less than gentlemen is the one who will be calling the shots because now 40% is bigger in comparison to what the other shareholders have. So ladies and gentlemen, it is all about what here, who is in control. It's no longer about, in this case here, who has, in this case here, over 50, the threshold of over 50%, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is no longer there, is no longer there. So I would want, in this case here, to basically get from you, to hear from you, whether now you understand the concept of parent subsidiary. That uh, in between parent and subsidiary here, we must have the word control. And if someone tells you to describe today what a subsidiary company is, don't forget to say that eh, a subsidiary company is any company that is under control, that is under control of a parent company. And then, of course, you can put in a rider as per I per S10. That is how you scare the examiner. That's how you scare the examiner. So are we together, ladies and gentlemen, up to there? Are we together up to there? Are we together? Are we together? I'm, I'm not hearing you guys. Are we together? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And of course, I know there must be a few students here who have never seen this Mwalimu before. Is there any student who has never seen this Mwalimu before? Any student here who is online today who has never, today is their first time. Today is their first time. 
to see this mwalimu uh, like Nancy. Great. My name is Dr. Joshua Aura. My name is Dr. Joshua Aura. Dr. Joshua Aura teaches uh, uh, online, Zoom, through Zoom. I don't teach anywhere physically through Zoom. And I teach in a college called RCM Online College. RCM Online College, which is purely a virtual college. We don't have, in this case here, any physical presence anywhere. Actually, the small office that I have at uh, at uh, Corner House, Corner House, at Kimati Street. It's just there for us to sit down when we are in town. Otherwise, ours is purely a virtual college. Now, when I'm not teaching, what do I do? I'm a full-time employee of a company called Aro. Aro is a company which, ladies and gentlemen, in this case here happens to be uh, a competitor of SAP. You must have heard of SAP ERP. And Aro is basically a company that provides group accounting, group accounting software solution, a very famous software solution that is used by group of companies here to consolidate their performance, right? Like the other day, as I was telling my section three of our students in the morning, the other day I was uh, doing a consolidation for Sony Group. Sony Group has got over 500 subsidiaries. It has got joint ventures. It has got uh, 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 associates and, uh, for example, financial instruments, all of them, for you to be able to consolidate like that, ladies and gentlemen, you must be very good in terms of IFRS. So IFRS is what I drink. It's what I eat every day at my workplace, and I love my job. I love my job. And that is why, especially for CPA Section 6, the advanced financial reporting, nowadays they call, they call them advanced, advanced levels. I don't teach. I don't teach any other paper apart from what, or rather any other topic apart from group accounts. I only teach group accounts. And my style of group accounts, ladies and gentlemen, I should be able to finish group accounts in how many lessons? Three lessons. Three lessons. Three lessons. Only three. We should be able to cover straight away. Right? Oh, you've never known what I do. <laughs> Okay, you need to research on this. It's a serious company. Yeah, it's a serious company. Research on it. And of course, uh, if there are any gaps over there, please make an application. We shall be able to consider you. Of course, if you qualify and uh, if there are uh, chances there. Great. Ladies and gentlemen, here we are. Here we are. So allow me to introduce uh, today's lesson by projecting some question. By projecting some question here. By projecting some question here. Yes, and this is the question that I would want us to do today. It's called pedantic, pedantic. This is an ACCA question, which is a serious question. And of course, as you know, at times your examiners steal questions from ACCA. You can never go wrong by doing this ACCA question. Ladies and gentlemen, I would want us to start right away by reading the requirements. We are told here to prepare the consolidated statement of profit or loss for pedantic for the year ending 30th September 2008. And then they want us to prepare the consolidated statement of financial position for pedantic as a 30th uh, September 2008. So the key word here is that they want us to prepare group account. Group means consolidated. So and I'm going to start with part B, part B. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if there is anything that uh, you should really be very good at, actually, normally even at my workplace, I normally tell people that, uh, if you're an accountant and you can't handle group accounts, then you have a problem. Because group accounting is the simplest thing. When you talk of consolidation, what do we mean? Putting together, adding, you're adding components, right? Right? So Esther is saying, wasn't group accounts removed in the new syllabus? Esther, don't you have the syllabus? This is an area that must be tested in financial reporting of section three, intermediate level, it must be tested in the advanced uh, paper. It is right well within the syllabus, actually at the middle of the syllabus. It is the thing that you're supposed to be knowing, Esther, please. It's at the heart of AFR. Actually, the moment, like if it's AFR, the moment you are good with these group accounts, you know the group cash flows, you know in this case here, like the EPSs, and then come and also major with the IPSAs, which are also help you, the IPSAs, like that then automatically you will pass these papers. 
actually there are those topics that if you happen to know, you really excel, you'd excel. So thank you very much. It's all about group accounting really. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, so let's come here. So we are told here on 1st of April 20X8, Pedantic acquired 60% of the equity share capital of Sophistic in a share exchange of two shares in Pedantic for three shares in Sophistic. The issue of shares, that's not important to me. The thing there is that uh, we have a company, there's a gentleman called Pedantic. So we have a company called Pedantic, a company called Pedantic, which acquired in this case here 60% of Sophistic. 60% of Sophistic. 60% is quite a high percentage. Not unless we are told otherwise, and I've seen this happening, where you are, you are told that this company has bought 60% of Sophistic, but they have ceded their control. They have given through some memorandums and of course agreements, they have given another party their control. Here there is no exception like that. Here we have acquired 60%, 60% is too high. So automatically, ladies and gentlemen, this means what here? that there is control, in between there is control, meaning that Pedantic will be called a parent company and Sophistic will be called a subsidiary, a subsidiary, a subsidiary like that. So in summary, in my group structure, we are saying something very important here that we have a Pedantic, we have Pedantic, who now is the parent, who owns what percentage, 60%. And then of course we have the other percentage being owned by someone else. What is the other percentage? The other percentage, ladies and gentlemen, what is the other percentage? You, you know that entire holding must be 100. Yes, thank you very much. So we have 40% here, 40% to make it 100%. So this 40% is held by another stakeholder that we call the non-controlling interest. Non-controlling interest. So we have here the non-controlling interest. What we shall be calling the NCI, non-controlling interest what we shall be abbreviating as the NCI. So the parent holds a controlling interest. The parent holds a controlling interest. And then the other party now holds what we call the non-controlling interest. Is that okay? Is that okay? Is that okay? Yes, thank you very much. And uh, for sure somebody there has raised something very important that there are so many people have their videos on. Please, please try to switch off your videos. When we shall come for a men's beauty contest or a handsomeness contest, right? I'll also wear my tie like this, or a lady's beauty pageant. I'll also be there as a judge and I'll ask each one of you to put what here on their videos. For now, please switch them off. Switch all your videos off. For me to have a better clarity of even voice, sound on the other side, Everybody, please put off your videos, yes. And then the other matters, we'll talk about the other matters later. Yeah, yeah, because I know that is quite, uh, even from my side, you'll start hearing people complain that we are not hearing you very well. It's because of bandwidth that has been really taken by your videos. Please switch them off, switch them off. Great, so this is working number one. We call it the group structure. Please write there, it is the group structure. So ladies and gentlemen, I've been able to know that we have a parent and a subsidiary relationship. So the moment you have a parent and a subsidiary relationship, then I know that the next thing will be for me to start consolidating. I will not start doing workings. I've always seen some people trying to do T accounts in group consolidation, debit, no. Cost, no, 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 no. You lose your marks there. After you have established how the group structure looks like, a good student knows that uh, if the examiner needs you to do a balance sheet, if the examiner needs you to do a consolidated statement of financial position, that will be the next thing. So please mention there, mention the name of the company, the name of the company, the name of the company is Pedantic. So we have the name of the company here is Pedantic. So we have Pedantic, we have Pedantic Group, Pedantic Group, Pedantic Group, we have Consolidated, Consolidated, consolidated statement of financial position as a act, as a act, as a act. statement of financial position as a act, as a act. You can see the statement date here as a 30th September 2008. 30th September, 30th September, 30th September, X8 like that. 
you underline like that. And then you start as usual with assets. This is an easy thing. If you cannot understand this and apply this concept in the next two, three years at your workplace, then I'll say you have a problem because this is the easiest topic. So then ladies and gentlemen, I have my assets. I know assets are classified into two. We have non-current futuristic assets, right? And then we have the current assets that have to be consumed within the year. So we start with non-current assets. So non-current assets, what do we have? Ladies and gentlemen, non-current assets, we have, of course, I'm following this, which is given here. I'm following this group consolidation is the easiest. I'm following what is given here. Like now we have non-current assets, we have property, plant, and equipment. So non-current assets, unakuja hapa, unasema, ziko, aina tatu, sana tatu, nakuanga aina tatu, unasema hapa, ya kwanza kabisa, ni property, plant, and equipment. I'll need a consolidation procedure for that. Then we have got other non-current assets that we shall be getting uh, cash flows from future, in the future, I mean. Like we have our subsidiary. So I'll have another line here called investment, investment in subsidiary, investment in subsidiary. And then we shall be having another line here called investment in associate. Investment in associate is okay. You should draw an emoji there and smile. Investment in associate, that is quite a good investment that you have to put here. However, if you want an example, you write investment in a subsidiary. In a subsidiary, please remember to draw an emoji there. Of course, in this case here of yourself doing what you're crying. Because there is nothing like investment in a subsidiary. Remember, this subsidiary is my son. If I'm paying school fees for my son, I can't say that I mean, you know, my son is just like myself. I can't invest in myself. I believe I invest in myself. I can't boast about it out there, right? Right? So any investment that I'm making within the group should never be reflected in the statements that you are doing there. You can never invest in yourself. You can never make a profit out of yourself. So parent and the subsidiary, this is quite a serious relationship. So investment in subsidiary, if you can remember, is normally replaced by what we call goodwill. So investment in subsidiary is normally replaced by what we call goodwill. Investment in subsidiary is normally replaced by goodwill. So the moment you write goodwill there, then now you should be able to smile. Seriously, yes. Because now we have known consolidation, but we can never talk of investment in subsidiaries in whichever statement. Anytime you see investment in subsidiary, always remember that the only thing that you can enjoy from, which is normally as a result of external factors that you can enjoy from your subsidiary, is the good way. But not your own, that, that is your own, that is an investment, investing in yourself, in yourself, right? How do you start counting that you are making an investment in your son? Like the other day, <laughs> there is a Mze who took the son to court, imagine. At the Kijana, amekata kumpatia usaidizi. After Mze alimfunza ni after Baba ke alimfunza ni akayote kijana amekata kusaidia Baba. What do you expect courts to do? Courts in this case here will straight away throw such a case outrightly on the first mention. Why, ladies and gentlemen? Because there is no way you can ever count things that you are doing to yourself. You cannot. So the only thing that you can enjoy out of uh, this son of yours is what we call goodwill. And the such goodwill, sana sana, in a kwanga ni a daughters. Hakuna kitu mzuri kama ukuwe na daughters ambao wa mefaulu. Wata kuchunga sana kama mze. These are your subsidiaries in this case here who have got what here? Yeah, goodwill. Wana give beyond, right? Wana sema mze anataka hii na mna hii. Mze anataka na mna hii, wana mpati, wana mpatia. Lakini vijana wengi, hata kupigia mzazi simu nyumbani. So, wu oh, kianza kusama to be invest in your son. No, just take uh, pride over the goodwill you enjoy between yourselves. So in this case, ladies and gentlemen, we are learning something very important here, that any investment in our subsidiaries shall always be replaced with what we call goodwill. This question does not have an associate. But when I teach group consolidation, I always keep on telling my students that I just have that line there. Let it be a tradition. It's like a chorus. When I go to my non-current assets, like a chorus, a chorus, I'm looking at PPE, I'm looking at goodwill has to be there, non-current assets, I'm looking at investment in what here, so associates. 
and of course investments in joint ventures etc but these three must always be there just put them there now ladies and gentlemen could we kindly in this case here go ahead and consolidate the property plant and equipment so property plant and equipment that i would want us to consolidate property plant and equipment that i would want us to consolidate they are here we have here pedantic pedantic the parent has got 4600 so fistic subsidy has got 12600 consolidation is all about adding these things you add them up so you come and take 4600 you come and take 4600 4600 plus 12600 plus 12600 and then ladies and gentlemen if you are a bright student i'm telling you there is something that i'll never fail myself i cannot get a fail in any question of group consolidation i know some students in this case they will start telling you that hi lift your calculator up and then you start adding nothing a good student knows that for property plant and equipment normally you as a good parent company before you acquire a subsidiary on the date of acquisition it will be important for you to do some background check it will be important for you to do some due diligence it will be important for you to bring in valuers valuers so you need now to ask yourself do we have any revaluations and those notes are normally the same i even wonder why students keep on crying about this thing these things are the same even by just producing like this I'll be able to know if I go to the additional notes here. If I go to the additional notes here, I'll be able to see. Look at note number one. At the date of acquisition, the fair value of sophisticated assets were equal to their carrying amount. Fair valuation is the same as what your revaluation. Their carrying amount, with the exception of an item of land, which had a fair value of dollars two thousand in excess of its carrying amount. Why am I calling this two thousand? It's because my statements here are given in terms of dollars. So for compatibility, I must keep on in this case, ladies and gentlemen, chopping the three zero. So instead of saying two million, I'm seeing two thousand there. Now, ladies and gentlemen, any additional information that you're given here, of course, that two thousand has not been factored in the financial statements given up there. So then, what should I do? Once I've realized that there is a, a whole value two thousand that has been no, that has not been factored there, there is no problem. So what I'll do is to come and increase my PPE because that fair valuation was higher. It's a, a revaluation upwards. So I'll come and say here, plus what here, somebody? Plus 2,000. 2,000. Plus 2,000. And then, of course, you and I are bright chaps. You know that eh, this is a, a, an item of plant whose value was not factored in the financial statement, meaning that this figure was missing from our fixed assets movement register. Not URP was missing from was missing from our fixed assets movement register. So it has not been depreciated. I know two things regarding this property plant and equipment. I know for property plant and equipment, ladies and gentlemen, I'll always check on the revaluation. I'll always check on the revaluation. In most cases, they'll tell you it's a revaluation upward. And I'll always remember to deduct the depreciation on that revaluation. The depreciation on that revaluation and if you want to be at peace please try to avoid those technical jargons depreciation under charge no 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 try to avoid them try to avoid them try to avoid them it's an over try to avoid them just be simple be simple if you want to understand the consolidation properly uh don't go jargon way be a simple person and you'll really understand this thing very well so ladies and gentlemen go ahead and calculate for me now here by the side somewhere here by the side i have a place where i'm doing my work I have a place where I'm doing my work. So I would want depreciation, depreciation on revaluation. So depreciation on revaluation, I'll take the revaluation amount itself, which is 2,000. I divide this by my rule. 2,000, I divide this by my rule. Rule stands for what here? Remaining useful life. This stands for the remaining useful life. So the remaining useful life as this, as this example, I tell you the remaining, yes. It had a remaining life of five years at the date of, you don't even have to tell me about straight, I know it's straight life. So I'll be able to apply this rule of mine, which is the remaining useful life, it's five. Ladies and gentlemen, we have here 2,000 divided by five. So 2,000 divided by five gives me what somebody? 2,000 divided by five gives me what somebody? That's quite a huge figure. 2,000 divided by five, this gives me 400. Thank you very much. But you see, this 400 is per annum. 400 is per annum. 
And if you remember, for depreciation, we would want the total cumulative depreciation. For how many months? For how many years have we stayed with this subsidiary? For me to be able, as a gentleman, for me to be able, as a gentleman, to really, for me to be able, as a gentleman, to really, for me to be able, as a gentleman, to get the number of months that we stayed, that we stayed with this subsidiary, I need the door, I need the door. And these are terms that we use every day in my workplace. What is the door of that subsidiary? What is the door of that subsidiary? So door means date of acquisition. When was this subsidiary acquired? When was this subsidiary acquired? When was this subsidiary acquired? When you look at this place here, the door, on 1st of April 08, pedantic acquired. So this thing was acquired on 1st of April 08. 1st of April 08. So the door here is 1st of April 08. And then we have the date of financial statements. The date of the financial statements that have been given you as an auditor, the date of the financial statements is here. The date of the financial statement is here. You can see these are my financial statements, 30th September 08, 30th September 08, 30th September 08. So we have here 30th September 08, 30th September 08. So ladies and gentlemen, then here in an exam, in an exam, Please lift up your hand. Don't fear anybody. So long as you're not touching anybody, lift up your hand and count the number of months. So we have uh, April, or oh, six months, eh? Relationship, thank you very much. So we have uh, April, uh, we have May, we have June, we have uh, July, we have uh, August, and then of course, September, the whole of it. There are six months. So please here, lift up your hand, especially ladies. Ladies here, ladies not know how to count months. I've never known why. Ladies not know how to count months. I've never known why. I'm an one woman, you It's on the cut. We shall overcome, okay? Of the cut. So, let me know, I'm going to do it. So, we've got what here? Six months. Now, if it is six months, ladies and gentlemen, in between here, remember this depreciation you divided by number of years, this is depreciation for a whole year. Right, but we stay with this subsidiary in this year. We have only stayed with it for six months. So it has accrued depreciation over this six, 400 times six over 12. So the depreciation for this amount here that never went, uh -huh, is supposed to be how much here, somebody? Depreciation that you're going to charge here is supposed to be how much? Talk to me, somebody. Talk to me, 200 more. So this 200 more is what I bring here. Unfortunately, again, and that is why I always keep on telling you to pray before you do your exam. Satan is real. You'll realize again after a bright sinner has been able to get these 200 and I could get the same a plus 200. And then they call me. They tell me, Mwalimu, like they told me last semester in AFM. Mwalimu, you taught us everything. You taught us about this and this and this and this. On a same exam, like an exam is teacher. On a same amerogwa. Akuna kurogwa. The concept of the father of the Lord. Kubali. Kubali yaishe. Kama hii depreciation unajua straight out, depreciation should be what? Yeah. Should be subtracted, right? Should be subtracted. Yes. So then could you kindly give me this figure? The resultant PPE. Inakuja ngapi resultant PPE. Inakuja ngapi. Resultant PPE. Inakuja ngapi. Pata potea resultant PPE. Inakuja kare na nangambia. Inakuja 55,000. 55,000. Thank you very much. Now, what do you know about Goodwill? Goodwill will be my last working. Among us, those working that I'll do at the very end. Among us, those working that I'll do at the very end will be Goodwill. And for sure, myself, I got six awards in CASM when I was doing exams. I was number 19 globally in ACCA in a paper called P2, which was called P2 those days. Nowadays, they call it strategic business reporting. Number 19 globally. And trust you me, like for consolidation, I was not doing good. I can never waste time. My, my aim whenever I go to any exam is to try to get the maximum number of marks I can get within 37 minutes. Within 37 minutes, if I can get six out of 10 marks, I'm good to go. I'll skip that question. I go to a cash flow question. I'll skip that question, look at other theory questions so that I, I'll be able to have a balanced way of uh, answering this 
question. So many students like last time they said me, how many guys called me and told me, well, you know what? I concentrated on group reporting. By the time the examiner was saying uh, one hour left, I was still doing question number. Mimi kama ni kuhotili tukona na kuambia kuja hapa kwanza kunywa soda. Najua menyoroshua. Because we are doing mambo ya time management in an exam. Exam you look at, how do I get the easiest marks easily, right? It is by doing this and this and moving on. So that later on, if I would want to, or rather if I get time, I can now easily come back. So what I'll do if it's myself, in this case, I'm doing an exam, I'll just write here working. And then that working at times, I'll even say that working, let it be done by the examiner himself. I don't want it. Investment in associate, I'll just leave it there and just mention zero there for the sake of also doing what here, filling up my question paper. For the sake of filling up my question paper, like that. Now, after that, ladies and gentlemen, we go to current assets. So current assets, current assets. Now, something nice is ringing. I don't know whether we are together. I don't know whether we are together so far. Are we together so far? I should not really move very fast because I'm trying to really do quite a lot within the one hour. But uh, again, I don't want to lose you. I don't want to lose you. Oh, great, great. Thank you very much. And uh, of course, I'll not uh, lose the opportunity of marketing myself. Right, you guys need to come and study with us online. You can never go wrong with online. You can never go wrong with online. So please, should you have that desire to study with us online, call our number. Our number is 0719-525,000. 0719-525,000. get to us and we get to study together. Don't be cheated. Why should you waste time? A whole one hour in traffic going to some physical college. Again, if you are going to physical colleges, when will you be able to really appreciate technology? Like myself, I got a very good job simply because of my knowledge of what Excel. How would I have I known Excel if I was doing my things? In this case, in a physical class, I can never do that. Even all my courses right now, I'm doing them online so that I get uh, used to this online. It's the way of life now given COVID. It is the way of life. You may not like what I'm telling you, but that is the truth of the matter. You come to thank me five years down the line. Like I remember there are some students here that I've worked with from CPA section one online. These guys came to online platform. They did not even know where to, how to mute their mics, how to mute their uh, videos. But right now they are professionals. They even know how to use emojis. They can come here and dance a little bit. They know how to raise hands when they want to ask questions. They know how to control things. And really that is a skill that we need moving uh, forward. Teleconferencing will be a big thing and any person will be able to know how to really handle uh, things here, will be able to make it big time. So this is our number, please join us. And if you want to know, if you want to know that this is the way to go, the students who are studying uh, online with me, advanced financial reporting, how many are we in our class? The students who are, who are doing, uh, the students who are doing uh, advanced financial reporting, we are 140 something. Do you think these people are stupid? Do you think they are wrong? Which physical college will be having this kind of number in one class? Nowhere, nowhere. So we continue. So current assets, current assets, we have the book here. Current assets, we have the book here, ladies and gentlemen. And this book, each one of you needs this book. I'll be able to send it to our paid groups immediately after this. After this, ladies and gentlemen, our current assets, they are here. This guy has done something very nice. Our current assets, I can see 16,066. And I'll simply combine them. We simply put them together. So we have 16,000. We have 16,000. So we have current assets here. I'll repeat again. I'll repeat again. So we have 16,000 plus 6,600 like that. Plus 6,600. To give discounts. No, no, no. This is a very affordable college. So we have here current assets. Current assets, what do we have here? 16,000 and 600. Leave it like that. Go to the next one. Of course, now we'll be able to get total assets. Now, ladies and gentlemen, listen and listen to me very well. Remember, I'm using my CPA section one knowledge. So don't add this. I'll be able to do something that don't add at all. I'll be able to make some adjustments. Now, after that, ladies and gentlemen, I know that now I'll be able to get my consolidated total assets. Then as an accountant, I need to look beyond those assets and ask myself, how have these assets been financed? How do we finance our assets? 
through owner's capital, through liabilities. So now I'll come to this other section and mention here equity, equity, equity and who? Equity and liabilities. Equity and liabilities. And the equity and liabilities, we normally start with the equity, remember. And the famous equity component we start with is what we call share capital. And the share capital, of course, you and I know, I'll never be labor on this. Share capital is always, is always the one of the parent we pick. The one of the parent we pick. So share capital, we shall pick the one of the parent only. Only. You simply go to that column of the parent pedantic, you put, thank you very much, Clinton. You pick the one of the parent only. Correct. From share capital, what else do we have? After share capital, after share capital and equity, of course, we have share premium. But this question doesn't have share premium. Not unless you'd want to fill up your paper and say share premium, and then you say, yes, yes. Those are the kind of things that times people do to, you know, at times I sympathize with students. Unapata mwana fuzi katazake ni blank, blank, blank kabisa. Arafu kumunyuma kabisa amerika na big letter that God bless the work of my hands. Which hands, honestly, which hands. You should also learn the art of filling up your paper. Right, right. So we have share capital there, share premium, share premium. Then the next one is the retained earnings. The next one is the retained earnings. So retained earnings, again, I know this is quite a complex one. I will need a working. So I'm going to working. Like in a jewel, ladies and gentlemen, at the end of the day, I can get it. Yes, there are reserves. Like reserves, you can get it. Reserves, you can get it. So after retained earnings, there is one equity component that everybody forgets. What we call the non-controlling what here? Interest. This is an equity component that so many people forget. Again, I'll write for them a working. So if I get time, I'll do the work. If I don't get time, I'll leave it. Why is this NCI an equity component? Remember, these people have given you money, which is not a loan. They will never, in this case here, come to demand their money back. If they want their money back, then they have to go to the secondary market, any secondary market like capital or other Nairobi stock exchange, and do what you sell their shares to a third party. But the money that they gave to us in form of share capital is a permanent source of capital. And if it's a permanent source of capital, it shall always be under equity. It shall always be under equity. NCI, I'm repeating this, that forget about everything. But I'll never forget about share capital, right? And I'll also never forget about NCI. And then I'll always remember that share capital, the one that we pick, should always be the one of, of the parent only. That's a free mark. NCI, I write working like that. Now, after I've cleared the three, now I'll be able to go to the liability section. And I'm doing this in a very professional way. Liabilities, I can't start with current liabilities, just like here. You have to start with non-current, long-term. So come and tell us there, the non-current liabilities. So the non-current liabilities. So the non-current liabilities, you underline using a ruler, underline using a ruler, underline using a ruler, Underline using a ruler. Thank you, Clifford. Yeah, yeah I mean, Clinton is able to get this. I can't Now, ladies and gentlemen, here we are. When you look at the non current liabilities, we have 10% loan notes. We have 10% loan notes. So we have 10% loan notes. So you'll come and mention here 10%, 10% loan notes. And remember, you are doing a very useless thing. You are consolidating, putting things together, putting things together. So the loan notes, ladies and gentlemen, I have to adjust my camera a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, so I need to capture the entire board like that. Great. So the loan notes, they have told me the one of the parents, the one of the parents, ladies and gentlemen, the one of the parents, what do we have here? The one of the parents here is 3,000. And then we have 4,000. So I'm simply adding there. So we have 3,000 and 4,000. So we have here 3,000 plus 4,000. You see, like now this one, I'll not even need to make any adjustment. This is a free mark. I've got so many low-hanging fruits here, low-hanging marks that I'm harvesting. After that, now we have the current liabilities. So we have the current liabilities. We have the current liabilities. So current liabilities, again, what has this examiner done? This is a good examiner. A good examiner has told me that the current liabilities are 8,200 combined every and 4,700. So we have 8,200, 8,200 plus 4,700 like that. 
Now, ladies and gentlemen, before now I start making my adjustments in the next 10 minutes, could you kindly confirm that we are still together? We are still together. Kindly confirm that we are still together. Yes, I'm ah, my name. Purity Hudson, thank you very much. Now, now, ladies and gentlemen, then everything is at home. Now I'll start asking myself, what do I need? Ah, consolidation questions are the same. So like now here, under current assets, I have, uh, in this case here, my inventories. Ah, I know I have to calculate UPS. I know there are things I have to calculate here. Great, now let me go to the additional notes. Let me go to the additional notes. Let me go to the additional notes. So these additional notes, we have already done note number one. Look at note number two. Sales from sophistic to pedantic in the post acquisition period were 8,000. 8,000. Sophistic made a markup on cost of 40% on these sales. Ladies and gentlemen, listen and listen to me very well. When I go to the consolidated income statement, that internal sale of 8,000, 8, 8 million, I'm cutting the three zeros. That internal sale of 8,000 must be removed, deducted from the group revenues, must be removed because it was a mistake at first. In this case, you have to recognize that as a revenue. Why? Because that is the internal revenue. Just like how I will get money from this pocket, I take it to the other pocket. The other pocket cannot start laughing and saying, hey, I've got any money. That's a fake money. That's a fake sale. So any internal sales must always be removed from the group revenue and the group cost of sales. I'm repeating again, ladies and gentlemen, whenever you come across any internal sale, internal sale is when we have a parent selling to a subsidiary or a subsidiary selling to a parent. Ladies and gentlemen, if for example today, like now we are here, all right, you are studying uh, uh, we are studying in this case here, this CPA. If my wife was to come to this particular class, ladies and gentlemen, and pay for the course, honestly speaking, I should never recognize that money in the group from the family setup. That's fake money, fake money, that's fake money. So internal sales, intra-sales must always be eliminated from two buckets, the bucket of group sales and the bucket of what your cost of sale to deduct. I'll be explaining that better when I go to cost of sales. In the balance sheet, there is something that I'm interested in. In the statement of financial position, I'll be interested in what we call the famous uh, UPS. So please write in full. UPS is an unrealized profit on stock. Unrealized profit on stock. So unrealized profit on stock, and I have to explain this in three minutes. And realize profit on stock normally, we get this by taking the profit margin times the famous read. Profit margin, yes. Profit margin times the famous read, where this read stands for the remaining, the remaining intra sales, remaining intra sales. Right? So remember, this is an unrealized profit on stock. It is the same as URP, yes. You get some books using URP, unrealized profits. But it's good for you to specify these unrealized profit from stock, these unrealized profit from fixed assets. You know, at times these companies do transfer their fixed assets to their subsidiaries at a profit. So that profit is never realized. So it is good to specify this is unrealized profit on stock. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we examine an Imfala San, Imfala San. Barali Pati profit margin, Amenipatia Makapu. Akilipatia Makapu of a third. What will be the margin from your management accounting information? If markup is a third, margin will be, if markup is a third, the profit margin will be what? A quarter, a quarter. Why? Because margin must always have a big base. Margin must always have a bigger denominator. What they've done to get that a quarter, they've taken one over three, of course, plus one. That's how they got to increase the base of the margin. You must increase the base of the margin. That's how they got a quarter. 
that before I ran away from this, what if in this case, ladies and gentlemen, margin, what if margin was two over five? Or rather, what if markup? What if Makapu was two over five? What will be the margin? Margin, profit margin will be two over six, right? Right, profit margin will be two over six, right? Because there are students who believe that uh, to get uh, the margin, the denominator you always increase by one. One is not a formula. We always take, in this case, I'll take two over five, and then I add the numerator down there. Which will give me two over what here? Two over seven, ladies and gentlemen. This examiner is a nice examiner. As I can the seven examiner, Fala Sana, Nikona Kudanganya, is a nice examiner. Sababu Minipatia Mark Yabure Hapa. I'm a Sema, so Fistic made a markup of 40%. So come on, you make markup of 40%. Come on, you make markup of 40%. Then what does that mean? What that means, ladies and gentlemen, is that first of all, I have to get the margin. I must get margin. So if markup is 40 over 100, then margin will be 40 over 100 plus 40 which gives me 40 over 140. Here you go sour. You see go sour. Here you go sour. Yeah, come on, Makapu is 40 over 100. Then for margin, I have to increase the base of the margin, yeah, which is the same as two over seven. Somebody is telling me, I'm not watching two same, you can't see naive. back to four over 14. This confused one of Fonzi. Koibo is a quality four over 14 times the remaining. Remember this guy's intra sales was 8,000. But by the time we were doing this financial statement, the company pedantic that had bought them had been able to sell some of them. And we were told, ladies and gentlemen, that they sold, that they sold, that they sold. Uh, Crispin, I've seen your question. It's quite an easy one. I'll be able to answer you right now. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you look at this, if you look at this, they are telling us there, if you look at this, 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 they are telling us Pedantica had sold 5,200 worth of goods. So I'm interested in reads. I'm interested, ladies and gentlemen, I'm interested in what was left, what was left behind, what is at stock as an internal sale. So minus, minus what has been sold, 5,200. So then could you kindly go ahead and advise me? So then what will be the final answer? What will be the final answer? What will be the final answer? Please go ahead and advise me. What will be the final answer? So they're telling me it is 800. Now, ladies and gentlemen, listen. Please listen here. Before I answer, Christine, please listen here. If we have an internal sale, like now you have sophisticated sold to pedantic, goods worth 8,000. If Pedantic went ahead and sold all those goods to outsiders, if, for example, they sold 8,000 goods, goods worth 8,000, then automatically the remaining uh, intra sales would have been zero. I would not have a, a been having anything to do with the UPS because I'm only worried of stock that I have, which moved between the companies. And one of these companies here had realized that as profit, and yet we know that this profit is fake. So, and that fake profit normally will be posted in the closing inventory of the remaining of the risk of the risk. Remember, IAS2 tells us never to accommodate profit in stocks. Anytime you hear the language of profit in stocks, please go and subtract. So, where should I subtract that 800 from? Where should I subtract the 800 from? As I finish, where should I subtract the 800 from? Where should I subtract the 800 from? Where should I subtract the 800 from? Please, as I finish, as I finish, as I finish, uh, from the car, yeah, from in, if inventory was there under current, I would have gone to inventory there, but now here yeah, we don't have inventory. So please come here and say minus 800, say minus 800. Current assets, under current assets, say minus 800. Now, ladies and gentlemen, after that, listen and listen to me very well. Listen and listen to me very well. After that, I know the next thing is about canceling the fake owings. The fake owings. Look at note number four. That is the last thing here. Note number four. Sophistics trade receivables as a 30th September include 600,000 due from pedantic. Now, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. If, for example, my dear wife was to come to me in the morning and tell me, Mwalimu, because I taught her, you know what? I want 50,000 Kenya shillings. I give it to her as a husband. 
will I carry that 50,000 as a, a liability that I expect to receive that money from my wife? Will I carry it in my books? In short, will I ever be paid that money? Will I ever be paid that money? No, forget it. And that is the language really. And that's why we are saying anything that is internal here, yeah? <laughs> anything that is internal here, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, the money is still yours yet. Anything that is internal, yeah, even, even if she uses it out there, my friend, that money will never come. So anything that is uh, internal, anything that is internal here yeah, is fake and shall be eliminated. Now, that reminds me the other day, uh, somebody told me that, like, Mwalimu, kama ni wewe umeomba bibi yako yo pesa. Ati ya bibi lazimi rudi. Ya bibi lazimi rudi. Ya bibi lazimi rudi. Kama ni mini mwomba bibi. Ya bibi lazimi rudi. Nimeambia bibi ya nipatia 50,000. Hanipatia. Yake lazima nirudishi. Utambua ni atama, right? Utambua ni atama, right? Right? Lazima. Some of the ladies who are telling us, some of the ladies who are telling us, si lazima erudishwe, I'm so sure you are not married. You are not married. The ones who are married, watakuambia apana. Yo pesa kutamu kweli, lazima iru, ilikuwa na kazi yaki. Watakuambia, the ones who are married, watakuambia na mbaye. Na turudi hapa. So tunambiwa, tunambiwa ni zanjelo, tunambiwa ni zanjelo, it depends on you. Yaki, yes. The number of sophisticated trade receivables, so intra owing, so intra owing, so we have here intra owing, intra owing, intra owing, so we have here sophistic, sophistic, all the pedantic 600,000. Just mention their sophistic 600. You have to chop the three zeros. And then we have a pedantic, on the other hand, has an internal owing. Internal owing. We are told here, in include 600 due from pedantic, which did not agree with the pedantic corresponding trade payable. This was due to cash in transit of 200,000 from pedantic to sophistic. Both companies have positive bank balances. That is useless. Ladies and gentlemen, listen and listen to me very well. So, according to, in this case here, pedantic, pedantic has an internal payable. Pedantic has an internal payable of how much? Remember, Pedantic, they have sent some money. Pedantic, of course, initially they started from the same 600, 600. But Pedantic has sent some money which has not yet hit the books of Sophistic. Pedantic has sent money which is uh, 200, right? 8,000, no. Thanks for trying. Pedantic has already paid some money. Pedantic has already said, paid some money which is 200. So then currently, how much does Pedantic owe? How much does Pedantic owe? How much does Pedantic owe? 5,800, how are they getting this? It's 400 really, it's 400. Because you see, Pedantic initially had an owing of 600, but they have paid 200. So in this case here, they owe what here somebody, they owe 400. This 200 is what we call cash in transit. It's cash in, it's on the way. So the other company has not yet received the money to adjust their books. Are we together with this 400? Are we together with this 400? Are we together with this 400? Now, please, let's make now adjustments. Remember, Sophistic here, this was a receivable, but a fake receivable. A fake, so go to receivables. Where do we find receivables? Where do we find receivables? Where do we find receivables? In current assets. Thank you very much. So go to receivables and they say minus 600. Minus 600. And then there is also a fake payable. A fake payable of how much? A fake pay payable of 400, isn't it? There's a fake payable of 400. Go to payables, we find them under current liabilities. Go to payables and cancel that fakeness. We don't want fake things, even fake fingernails. We don't want even fake nails now. Everything fake, we shall be removing in consolidation. Anything fake, we shall be removing. Anything fake, we shall be removing. Everything fake, we shall be removing. So, come up with an island fake for group consolidation.
Are we together up to there first of all? Up to, I haven't touched cash in transit, but are we together up to here? Are we together up to there? Are we together up to here? Are we together up to here? Yes. Now then we have the cash in transit is a current asset. This cash in transit two ways. Either utakuja uongeze cash in transit hapa, ama vile tunapenda, cash in transit wana napenda kuipakia line yake sana. Ukuja hapa, useme cash in transit. Ukuja hapa, useme cash in transit. Uipatia line yake jameni. Kwa tunapenda kuipatia line yake jameni. So, ebu nipatini figa ya, nipatini figa ya cash current assets. Cash in transit, napenda kuipatia figa yake. Oh, in the future time, in the future time. Is there a student who can easily give me this current asset very fast? We are supposed to go back to the office, yes. We are supposed to go back to the office, but I would really want to have these figures. 31, two, is it 31 or 21? 21, 200. 21, 200. So here we have 21, 200. Here we have 21, 200. And then, of course, here we have 200, right? There we have 200, right? And then loan notes. Loan notes, what do we have? 7,000? Loan note 7,000. How about current liabilities? Current liabilities, there's somebody who can give me the current liabilities very fast. Current liabilities very fast. Current liabilities very fast. Is anybody who can give me current liabilities very fast? Current liabilities. So if I do it this way, I'll end up 12,900. Eh? I'll end up getting so many marks without even knowing what I'm doing, 12,900. I'll end up getting more than the mark, more than half of the marks. More than half of the marks, more than half of the marks, more than half of the marks. Okay. Okay. So there is a question that Crispin asked here, which is a really uh, an easy one. An easy one. If you remember from high school, ladies and gentlemen, from high school, from high school, or oh, it's 12,500. Is it 12,500? 12, 12,500. Please don't mess our video. So remember from high school, if you're given like 33 and a third, Right? This is a proper fraction. So you need to make it improper. How do you make it improper? It's very easy. You will take this times this. So it will be 33, 33, 33 times what here? Times three, plus one, plus one. Aha. Uh -huh. Which will end up giving me what figure? Somebody, could you kindly help me here? 33 times three plus one gives me what figure? Gives me what figure? 100, right? How to change uh, 100? So it will be 100 over these three, isn't it? And then because they're using the percentage, because they're using the percentage, then this will be, a, you know, percentage will be, so it will be 300 over 300, which will be the same as what here somebody assigned. Which will be the same as that side. And the moment now you tell me that this is your markup, then I will easily, I will easily, in this case here, give you margin. I'll easily give you the margin. I'll easily give you the margin. Have I answered you, Crispin? Actually, I remember very well when I was doing taxation, I remember very well when I was doing taxation, I was told this, that uh, whenever you see markup, markup of 33 and a third percent, you always ignore this under the percentage. Know that the markup is what? The markup is a third. That's what I was told those days. Markup is a third. Now you can easily change it. Thank you very much. At least you've seen that. So ladies and gentlemen, now we have come to the end of our very session. It has been a pleasure having you online over lunchtime. I know it has not been easy. And I hope you have enjoyed. And I hope that you'll make a choice to become a student of RCM Online College. Ikitia kukimbia kimbia kwa physical classes all over, hatutaki yo maneno. Saitu nataka wanafunzi, waingie katika nini? RCM Online College. You can even see some colleges there wanakua wanafunzi wetu pia. Which is very good. We welcome them, yes. So please, should you want in this case to make any queries or uh, to really talk to us at any given time, this is our number, 0719. 525,000. Now, also remember that I'll be having, I'll be having online Excel, online classes, advanced Excel, advanced Excel classes from this Saturday, this Saturday. We charge 2,000 bob. We charge 2,000 bob for this particular what year classes. We teach you the VLOOKUP. We teach you the pivot tables. How do you slice and dice data ETC? So please, I expect you guys to inquire. And then we have a very good offer that if, for example, you pay for your online classes, you know, it's 3,500 per subject. This is an offer starting this week, 3,500. If you pay for at least three, if you pay for at least three, if you pay for at, at least three, 
at least three subjects. You pay 10,500, then you get advanced Excel classes for free. You get advanced Excel classes for free, for free. If you pay for three subjects, all of that at once. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Online class timetable, videos to Konaz or Pia, all that we shall be able to get to you straight away on WhatsApp. We shall be able to send to you those things on WhatsApp. But please, let's make RCM online college a movement. We are looking forward to Excel classes. I'll be teaching you on Saturday. We are yet to agree whether we start at 2 p.m. or 3 p.m. We already have a group. We already have a group. We shall be able to agree. Temptable for advanced Excel. Yes, I'll be able to send it to you. It's important. Advanced Excel has made me see places, places that I would never, ever imagine I would get to. I would never, ever imagine I would get to. Simply because of knowing how to do the sum ifs, it is Excel is a huge thing. Excel is a huge thing. And there is nobody who will ever, ladies and gentlemen, there is nobody who will ever teach you this advanced Excel. Who knows what he's doing at this rate? Many people I see out there, ladies and gentlemen, Many people that I normally see out there, they charge 8,000 like that. Me, I'm teaching you Excel for accountants, and then I'll be able to give you a certificate immediately with clear. I can see you have very good questions, but I also have to, I'm, I'm an employee somewhere. I have to sign back to my machine. I'm an employee somewhere. I work from home 100%. I work for a Swedish organization called Arrow. So please allow me to disappear. Otherwise, it has been a pleasure. What you'll do, I'll not close the meeting. You can keep on, in this case, I'm making chats, but uh, of course, I'll switch off the mic. I'll also switch off the video, but just make inquiries. I'll be taking your inquiries slowly by slowly. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.